Hey guys, welcome to episode 16 of Bucket for Beginners. In this episode, I'm going to go over hash maps. Um, originally, I was going to uh, kind of do hash map, like just kind of go over them quickly and just give an overview of, of what they are, but I've decided I'm going to go in depth and I'm going to do a whole example of how to use them. And I'm going to show uh, like a real implication or um, implementation of how you would use them. So, let's get started. So, a hash map is very similar to a list. If you watched the array list video, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, where it can store an infinite amount of objects. Now, an object is just an instance of a class where you make, where you make a new. Um, so, a hash map is, is very similar to a, a list, except in, um, in a list, it just stores, like if you have an, uh, an array list of strings, it just stores a bunch of strings. Now a hash map, it stores, um, it stores two values in the form of key and value, and I'll explain what that means. So we have a hash map, um, we're going to open up the bracket, the um, less than or equal to, or less than or greater than signs, I'm sorry, and then the first value is going to be the key. This is what you're going to use to get the value of things. And don't worry, this is all going to make sense by the end. So let's say that, um, actually, I'll just jump right into it. For this example, I'm going to go over how to make a set home method. So each player is going to have their own home, which would be a location. So in this case, each player, which is going to be the key, is going to be associated with the location. So we're going to make a, a hash map that has a player and a location. We'll call this player homes. And then we'll just make a new hash map and this has to be the same as the original as the first one. Don't forget the the uh, parentheses at the end. We got to import hash map. Now we're good to go. So, for the array list, the way that we put stuff inside of it was by using the dot add method. Um, the hash map is pretty similar except it's, it's called put. So let's get rid of these. We're going to make a whole fresh pile of code here. So we're going to say uh, if, oops, if the command label goes set home, then we're going to get the the player homes hash map I'm gonna get rid of these we're gonna get the player homes and we're going to put something inside of it the methods called put and if you notice uh, for the put method it's um, it is the two parameter types are the types that you specified earlier. And I apologize if I kind of stumble. I'm pretty tired right now, to be honest. So, do my best. Um, so the two parameter types are the things that you set up here. So we're going to put the player that sent the message, and we're gonna put the location that the player is standing on, which is player.getLocation, because this is gonna get wherever the player is currently at, which we wanna set as their home. So, oh, what's wrong? What are you yelling at me for? Oh, uh, <laughs> it thinks that we're using um, the other kind of location. Because we made our own location, it thinks that we're using our own. We're just going to scratch that, because you understand how that, wor that works. And we'll scratch better location. There we go. Because we can't get the location of a player because it's trying to get the bucket location and we were trying to give it a like our own location that we made in the other video. So it was being mean. So we want to import the bucket location, not these Java X locations. Import that one. Now we're good. Okay, so what this did is it put the player object in it and it put um, the location that he was at. Now something that I want to note, and we actually have to change this around a little bit. I've um, when you're working with bucket and and hash maps, 
you can't um, it's not good practice to store actual player objects because it's a waste of memory because if you think about it all that you need to get a player is his name because every player has a different name because of the player object that like from the player uh, the player class so this object has all things like their enchantments or I'm sorry their um, their potions it has their inventory it has all that on it so it's storing a lot of data in this that's really not necessary so we're actually going to change this to a string which represents the player's name which is a lot um, cause, so instead of doing the player object we're going to do player dot get name and then I'll show you how to get the player from the the, str the string from like the name and then we're going to say if um, if you do a set home, if the command label equals home, oh, let's send, let's make this official. Let's send the player a message saying uh, home set, and then when they type home, it's going to teleport them to the home. So the way that we're going to do that, we're going to um, make a a, um, a private location variable just to use it. So we're going to do look. Uh, what should we name it? La 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 la. Um, home location. And we're going to set this equal to player homes, and this is where it's it's very important. This is where it all comes together. We're going to get. And you can pass any object in here, so uh, you're gonna get the the value that's associated with this string, which is which is our player. Oh, excuse me. And if you notice, this is what it's gonna return. It's gonna return the location. So if we get player dot get name, we're gonna get whatever value is associated with this name or with this string which in this case is going to be the location that we put in there and, uh, um, and then we're going to teleport to home location and then we'll send them a nice message saying uh, uh, gold teleported to home there we go and that is it. What's wrong? Oh, I didn't change the. I didn't change this to a string. There we go. All right. Um, if you wanted to get a player object out of the name, you just to, this is just an example. You would do bucket dot get player, and then give them the name. Just, just so you guys know. Okay, so let's save this, test it out. Set home and home. Perfect. Export. Okay, Ooh, I don't have anything started up or nothing. Oh my gosh. Get that going. All right. So, ooh, a little laggy. That's not good. What the heck? I mean, the, I have. The, oh, it's rendering a video. That's why. So, let's try it out. Oh wait, I have. <laughs> I have to get rid of essentials. They have their own set home. Come on. Okay, sorry about that. So we're going to set home, home set, and we'll just put a piece of wool there just, just to, for a reference. Let's walk over here. And we're going to go to home, teleported to home. Look at that. That simple. 
That's how simple it is to set up a set home command. It's what, seven, eight lines of code? Easy. Now if you wanted this to last like over a um, like a restart because anything stored, let's go back to Eclipse, anything stored inside of this hash map is going to be deleted when you restart the server. Um, so next video is going to be on config files so you'll learn how to store stuff. Um, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to show you guys with hash maps. Oh, I know one. Um, if you want, if you put something, if you put something in a hash map that is already there, it will overwrite the current value. So if I put in, um, if I set my home again, it's not going to create like a second key. You can't have two keys. That's, that, that's not allowed with a hash map. Um, I'm sorry, you um, you can't have two identical keys. So if I was to set my home again it would overwrite the string in this hash map of me with the new location so um, just so you guys know that and th the last thing is how to because we talked about loops um, you might be wondering how you would like iterate through a hash map like, like what if you want to get the values of it like because it's it's kind of like a two-part value so how would you use that in a for loop um, you have to do map dot entry and then you have to give it oops you have to give it the two values that you had up there so our, our case is string and location so this is like the data type it's a it's an entry of string location and then we're going to get it from player homes dot entry set so this is going to return it's kind of using it's going to return a set which is another type of variable of the string location entries so when you oh I have to give this a name uh, we'll give this homes so now when you enter the loop if you wanted to get the key that's associated with this home you would do homes dot get key that would give you a string because that's the key if you wanted to get the location you would do get value and that would give you the value with that one so in this case if I did um, th there's only one thing inside of the player homes hash map so if I did homes dot get key this would return my name if I did get value it would return a location object um, it w it, I'm sorry it would return my home and that is it. I drink some Capri Sun. So, um, trying to think. No, oh, I believe we're done. So that is it for hash maps. Um, that you're going to use these a lot. I know when I first learned how to use them, it was like a light bulb had just gone off. I wanted to use it for everything. So these are very useful if you want to make per player. Uh, config files like if you want to have a folder in your um, like a folder inside of your plugins folder called like players or something and then you want to have all of your individual players that join your server have their own file to store like uh, um, like kills or something in or or store their money anything like that I'm gonna show you how to do that actually on player or I'm sorry on video it's one of these it's like 24 24 25 something like that I forget exactly but I will show you guys how to do that but for now next video is going to be config files after that is going to be how to use multiple classes for commands so that like if you want to have set home and home we don't have to put all these if statements inside of our on command method um, the one after that number 19 is going to be um, I'm going to show you guys an easier way to to use subcommands. It's just the way that I do it. That'll be like a five minute video. Then finally after that we will be on episode 20 which will be the start of our the kits plugin that I'm going to be making from start to finish. And I'm going to guide you guys through the whole thing. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Pointless curses, nonsense verses You'll see purpose start to surface No one else is dealing with your demons Me 